Hello aspirants, I once again welcome you all to Editorial Analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 30th of September 2024. Now before getting into the newspaper analysis, I have an important announcement for you. The most awaited pre-storming UPSC preliminary test series 2025 batch 2 is starting on 5th October 2024. We have provided you the registration link in the description. You can click the link in the description and register for this particular test to check your preparedness for preliminary test. So with this announcement, let us look into the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. In this first article, we will be seeing about the recently concluded Summit for Future of UN. In this article, we will see about the inequalities in global governance and how it can be rectified. In the second article, we will be seeing about the uses of stem cells from the mains perspective. So without any delay, let us get into the news article discussion. Now look at this editorial article from the Hindu newspaper. This article talks about the Summit of the Future. See, this summit was organized by United Nations and many member countries of United Nations participated in this particular summit. So, the author of this article highlights the outcomes of the summit and also notes certain shortcomings that needed to be addressed in the near future. So, we shall see what are all the points given in the article from the Wayne's perspective. Before that, we shall start with the origin of this particular summit. See, it is a two-day summit where all the UN member countries will be meeting together and this summit is result of UNSC's common agenda report. So the report highlighted certain deviations in the global commitments and the main purpose of this summit is to realign that deviation. Other aim of the summit includes to reaffirm the UN Charter, then to renegotiate multilateralism. See, unilateralism is the term uni itself, it means like having alliance with a single party. But multilateralism, it means engaging with different countries instead of having a tie with a particular nation. So it reinvigorated this multilateralism and it was organized to boost implementation of existing commitments and to agree on solutions to new challenges and to restore trust. So this is the agenda of the summit. At the result, the summit aimed to bring in pact for the future. See, this is an action-oriented outcome document where all the member countries will agree to cooperate to achieve the current commitment and to work for future challenges that might be arising in the future days. Now, let us quickly go through the outcomes of the particular summit. See, the first notable outcome is the Global Digital Impact Initiative. See, under this particular initiative, cooperation in the digital space was addressed and it aims to minimize the digital divide through cooperation and coordination. Secondly, the Declaration on Future Generations was signed. See, it is a call for national action through policies that will safeguard the future generation. Thirdly, an international scientific panel on AI was formed. See, this is a legally binding treaty. This will ensure the use of AI system in fully consistent with human rights, democracy and the rule of law. Apart from this, relegation of climate change happened. See, priority was given to commitments on climate change. But currently, the focus was on scaling up adoption finance. And the summit also discussed about including sustainable indicators in GDP measurements. So apart from this economic terms, while calculating the GDP, environmental factors will also be taken into account to check the actual implementation of any climate change commitments. So these are all certain very important outcomes of the summit. However, there are certain unaddressed areas. For example, there was lack of consensus on Security Council reform, especially when it comes to giving representation to unrepresented part of the globe. Secondly, reforms of global financial institutions like World Bank and IMF, they remained limited. Greater say was given to the developed countries in decision making and reviewing sovereign debt. And the summit also did not address the persistent imbalance in global governance. The author particularly here highlights about the G7 grouping which actually shaped the global agenda. This leaves behind the undeveloped and developing countries in shaping the global agenda. So these are all the unaddressed issues with respect to the UN Summit for Future. So, so far we saw about the UN's Summit for Future, origin of it, 
then we saw about the aim of it then we saw what are all the positive outcomes uncertain unaddressed issues so now we shall move on to the way forward part so what can be done to address all these issues see the first thing is to bring in inclusive economic policies see this will provide better market access fair trade terms and equitable financing even to the developing countries secondly debt relief see prioritizing debt relief to underdeveloped and developing countries will help them to concentrate on socio economic development like poverty elevation and etc so debt relief can be prioritized for highly indebted nations thirdly resource redistribution should be done this should be based on need and not on political influence apart from this regional cooperation should be strengthened especially the south south cooperation should be strengthened so that we should not rely on the western institutions for reforms apart from this un security council could be reformed the council can add permanent members from underrepresented regions across the globe like from asia africa and etc finally financial institutions they can be democratized by giving more voting rights to the developing countries so this will not only give representation to the underrepresented countries but also helps in eradicating problems at the source so these are all very important facts that you have to remember about this particular topic so i have a mains practice question for you let me read out the question discuss the key challenge in global governance highlighted by the growing inequalities between developed and developing nations how can reforms in international institutions and new measures of development help bridge this gap illustrate with example from the global south so you can write an answer and post it in the comment section so that we will review your answer so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this article from indian express this article talks about a study in which a 25 year old woman with type 1 diabetes has begun to produce her own insulin in less than 3 months after a transplant of reprogrammed stem cells so basically by using the stem cells a woman has begun to reproduce her insulin cells that are required to contain this type 1 diabetes so this is what the news is about so in this news article discussion let us revise about stem cells from the mains perspective now before that we should have a basic idea about diabetes see diabetes is a long term condition affecting insulin production or use so whenever we consume food the food is converted into glucose and absorbed into the blood stream from the smaller intestine once they enter the blood stream pancreas it will release a hormone called insulin this insulin helps the cells in the body to absorb the glucose from the blood stream in order to get energy to function so this is how a normal human body actually works but in certain cases the insulin production will decline or the produced insulin could not be used properly by the cells to gain energy those cases leads to hyperglycemia that is elevated blood sugar level so this leads to many complications like blindness kidney failure heart attack stroke lower limb amputations and etc talking about the types of diabetes there is two types of diabetes type 1 and type 2 when we talk about type 1 disease it is a autoimmune disorder affecting insulin producing cells so the pancreas it has the hormone the immune system starts affecting the insulin producing cells and this leads to decline in insulin hormone itself so this is a chronic condition where the pancreas produces very little or no insulin itself so it is common in children and young adults the the treatment for this type of diabetes requires insulin therapy which includes injections or pump it can this type of diabetes can lead to hypoglycemia low blood sugar hyperglycemia high blood sugar and even diabetic ketoacidosis which is a life threatening condition when we talk about the statistics india has over 240000 cases of type 1 diabetes in children or adolescent as per 2021 idf atlas when we talk about type 2 diabetes that is td2 in this particular case even if insulin is produced it cannot be utilized by our body 
So this can develop at any age, but it is most common in mid-aged and older adults. Talking about the treatment, we require healthy diet, regular exercise, weight loss, medications and insulin therapy, blood sugar monitoring. And it can lead to cardiovascular diseases, kidney and nerve damage, then vision loss, then food ulcers, then increase in infection risks, risks and etc. See, all these happens because when there is excess of glucose in the bloodstream and it is not observed by the cells, it is usually tried to excrete in the form of urination. So, here the kidney, it works double time to remove glucose from our body. This overwork leads to kidney damage. Also, when excess of glucose is there in the bloodstream, it affects the blood vessels around our heart leading to cardiovascular diseases and it can even lead to deposition of fats around the heart and again leading to cardiovascular diseases. Vision loss actually happens due to inflammation of the blood vessels around the eye. Apart from this, there is another type of diabetes named the gestational diabetes. See, this occurs during pregnancy where body becomes less sensitive to insulin. This typically results after childbirth. Now, coming back to the news article, we saw that the stem cells has actually helped in recovering from type 1 diabetes. Let us see about them in detail. So, what are stem cells? See, stem cells are specialized cells capable of developing into various cell types. So, we have different types of stem cells. You can see that in the image given here. Firstly, the totipotent. It means each cell can develop into a new individual. So, here you can see a fertilized egg. Now, this egg is an example of totipotent. Then comes the pluripotent. It is a type where each cell can develop into over 200 cell types. Then comes the multipotent where cells differentiate and can form a number of tissue types. And finally comes the unipotent where cells that can differentiate along only one lineage. That is that can be differentiated into only one type of cell. For example, if you are taking nervous system, if you are taking neurons, these cells can only differentiate into neurons, similarly to other tissue types. Now, these are the types of stem cells. So, by reprogramming these stem cells, it has been reintroduced into the pancreas. This has led to the development of insulin cells inside a body of type 1 diabetes patient. This is what the news article is entirely about. Now, let us quickly go through why stem cell therapy is required for type 1 diabetes. See, it helps in regenerating insulin producing cells, thereby it restores insulin secretion. Secondly, it reduces inflammation by protecting the beta cells from autoimmune attacks. Thirdly, it enhances the beta cell survival. It secretes a hormone called cytokines. This will promote beta cell longevity and increase the survival rate and it gives us a renewable source of insulin producing cells. So, so far we saw about what is diabetes, then we saw what, what are all the types of diabetes. We saw about type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, then we saw about gestational diabetes. Then we saw what are all the treatments, complications caused by these types. Then we saw about what are all stem cells and their types. Finally, we saw why stem cell therapy is required for type 1 diabetes. Now, I have a mains practice question for you. Describe the procedure of stem cell therapy in diabetes in detail with its advantages and shortcomings and list out other applications of stem cells in the medical field. So, you can write an answer and post it in the comment section. We will review your answer. So, we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankara's Academy YouTube channel. Now, thank you so much for listening.